Hello students. In the last lecture, we found out what is the work done in an isothermal process. In an isothermal process. So, what is an isothermal process? So, basically, an isothermal process is a process in which the temperature remains constant. So, basically, if we have a piston, which is filled with some gas, ideal gas, dilute ideal gas. And let's say we have some weights on the piston okay and then at each instant we keep on removing one of these grains of sand now these weights are nothing but grains of sand so as we keep on removing the grains of sand what will happen is as we remove one grain of sand the pressure on this piston will decrease and since the pressure is decreased there will be a change in volume so if we have to plot this change of volume and pressure on a, on a graph PV diagram is called PV diagram what we notice is as we remove these weights as you remove these grains there will be a change in volume and since it's an isothermal process the temperature of this gas must remain constant so now if you look over here once the grain is removed there will be a change in volume and the gas will do some work in order to change this volume to increase the volume if the gas has done some work to increase the volume that means the temperature of the gas has decreased or increased okay the temperature of the gas has changed so now in order for the temperature of the gas to remain constant what should we do is in an isothermal process we should keep this piston on a heat bath so on a reservoir so that means every time a grain is removed the gas does some work and that work is done by using some of its internal energy some energy some heat has to be supplied to the gas from the reservoir so each time we remove a grain there is decrease in pressure and there is increase in volume and there is some heat supplied to the gas so we depict this process this isothermal process using the following way so this is the isothermal curve so the gas is at initial position this i and it reaches at the final position f and as it goes from i to f there is heat being supplied such that the temperature remains constant and that heat supplied we denote it with a squally line and writing it as q and we in the last lecture we also found out what is the work done in this process so the work done in this process is nothing but the area under this curve and the work done in this process happened to be equal to if this is at this point if the pressure was pi and volume was vi and at point f the pressure was pf and volume was vf and the work done in this case is equal to nrt ln vf by vi this was the case uh, this was the process that we started last time and remember in this case the gas goes from point i to point f so this is the way it goes now the same process had occurred same process had occurred from i to f but in this case say that the gas had moved from not i to f but from f to i the rem remaining parameters of the gas happen to be same so then in this case the work done is again nothing but the area under the curve but the quantitative value of work done is equal to minus nrt ln vf by vi so what we consider here is whenever we go from from right from left to right we consider the work done to be positive and whenever we go from right to left we consider the work done to be negative so now we study some other types of thermodynamic processes so this is isothermal process what we have done up till now is isothermal process so next process is that we will study we require the, so now we will study other types of processes let us consider the following process so let us consider let us first consider the So let us consider the following thermodynamic process. So let's say a gas 
is at point A. The state of a gas is at point A. The gas goes from point A to point B in an isothermal fashion, just as we have studied here, isothermal fashion. So, gas goes from A to B. Then it goes from B to C in a straight line. B to C. And then it again goes from C to A. So, this is how the gas moves. The gas, this is what the process is. It goes from A to B, B to C, and C to A. Now, the question is, what is the work done in this process? What is the work done in the in this process? Now, now as we go along point A to B, we go from point A to B, the work done is nothing but the area under A B. So work done is nothing but the area under a b the work done now in this in the work done along a b is this area under the curve the work done along b c is nothing but area under this curve under this curve b c and the work done along c a is nothing but the area under c a but if you see here the area under c a is zero so that means the area, so the, that means the work done in CA, in the process CA is zero. So what is the net work done in ABC? Now if you remember, when we go from left to right, we take the work done to be positive. When we go from right to left, the work done, we take it to be negative. So the net work done in going from A, B, C and A is nothing but the area under this curve which is positive, which happens to be positive, minus the area under this curve, because the area in this curve is negative, it goes from right to left, and the area in the work done, and the area under C A is zero. So the net work done in A, B, C, A, going from A, B, C, A, is nothing but area in this curve. What I have highlighted in red is the work done. So, if you see here, this is a cycle. It goes from A to B, B to C, and C to A. So the net work done in this cycle, we write it as W cycle, is nothing but, we introduce a new integral called here, the closed integral, sorry, closed integral, this is PV, P times DV. So the work done in this closed cycle, now this integral means it's a closed loop. It's a closed loop. It's called a closed loop integral. So it goes from A to B, B to C, and C to A. So it's a loop. The work done in this cycle to go from A, B, C, A is nothing but a closed integral of P times D, V. Now, the work done in this case, in this case, A, B, C, which goes from this end, goes from left to right, then right to left, and then straight upwards, the work done in this case happens to be positive. So, the work done is positive. Why it is positive? Because we see that A, B is at a higher pressure. So, that means the work done by A, B is much greater than the work done by B, C. Now what do you think will happen in the following process? The same process, PV, but instead of going from A, B, let us say the process goes from A to C, A to C, and C to B, C to B, and from B to A. And what will be the work done in this process? If you see in this case, the left, right to left work, that is from B to A, is at a higher pressure. So that means in this case, the work done work done will be negative that is work done will be less than zero now in all these processes we go from a to b b to c and back to a or you can consider this case 
all these processes what do you think is a change in internal energy what is a change in internal energy i'll tell you if you look here remember i told you that internal energy is nothing but the state variable so it depends on the point where you are you where you are on the pv diagram this is a pv diagram so it depends only on the point of where you are on the pv diagram it doesn't matter how you have got to that point now in this process in this cycle a b c a you are back at the same point so at this point if you are back at the same point what is your change in internal energy since you are back at the same point your internal energy must be equal to zero so whatever work you have done in this case will be equal to whatever work you have done will be equal to the change in the heat is nothing but heat that was supplied to the system this we get from the first law of thermodynamics that is delta u equals delta q minus delta w so since the change in internal energy is zero whatever work you have done in this process is nothing but the heat that you have supplied to the gas another thing that i should mention here is if you see this process this process bc this process bc in this process bc you see that the quantity p sorry the variable p the p that is the pressure is constant so whenever there is a constant pressure and there is change in the volume we call such a process as isobaric that is the straight line this process is what we call as isobaric if you consider this process ca if you see this process you see that v is constant whereas there is change in pressure so such process where v is constant and there is a change in pressure we call it as isochoric okay so if i have to find the work done in this process bc i have to find the work done in this process bc and the work done in process bc and the work done is nothing but is nothing but the area of this rectangle and what is the area of this rectangle it is this length into its width so its length is let's say this point is nothing but pb let us consider it to be pb so if this is my length pb and this is my volume change in volume delta v then the work done is nothing but pb times delta v okay and similarly what will be the work done in isochoric process if you see here isochoric process there is there is no area under this curve c so for isochoric process the work done is zero okay so quantitatively if you have to find then for isobaric process the work done is change in volume into the pressure in isochoric process for isochoric process where the volume is constant we see that the work done is zero so right now till now we have studied three types of processes one is the isothermal process one is the isobaric process and one is the isochoric process so from these three processes we can find whatever the work is done by each of these processes now we study a very important process which is called as the adiabatic process adiabatic process so this is a process where the gas changes its volume but the gas is thermally isolated that is delta q equals 0 so that means no heat flows into the gas and no heat flows out of the gas so basically what to consider is you consider the piston which is filled with gas but we consider this piston to be thermally isolated it is it is in isolation nothing no heat can go inside this and no heat can heat come out of this okay so again consider this piston in thermal isolation and let's just consider there are some weights on this piston so soon as you remove this weight immediately there is a change in pressure and there will be change in volume but since there is Uh, this is in thermal isolation there won't be any heat which is added to this piston and there will no be there won't be any heat which is going out of this piston okay so if we have to plot this on a pv diagram pv diagram 
so every time we remove a weight there is a change in pressure change in volume and since there is no heat exchange that means there should be a change in temperature okay so let's say initially we were at this point initially we were at this point and as a, as we remove the pressure change the pressure remove the weights there is a change in pressure and change in volume the gas has reached somewhere here at this point but remember in this case there is no change in there is no heat applied so that means the temperature must change so that means when the gas reaches here the temperature of the gas must change so we can consider this point to be on one isothermal and this point to be on another isothermal now if you look here for this adiabatic process the curve is much steeper compared to the isothermal so basically what you have to consider is this adiabatic process jumps from one isothermal to another and it is changing its temperature so what is gas is doing is if you can consider infinitely many such isothermals in between and every time there is a change in pressure the gas jumps from this state to this this state to this this state to this state, and eventually it reaches in this final state okay so as it jumps from one isothermal to another it changes its temperature for reference let us consider the first isothermal to be at temperature 300 kelvin and this since is at low pressure the isothermal below it will be at a lower temperature let us consider it to be 200 kelvin so in this process, adiabatic process, what we see is as the temperature t as the pressure decreases, the temperature drops. As the temperature as the pressure decreases, the temperature drops steeply. Now we know that for an isothermal process, for an isothermal process, we know that the T V is equal to a constant. Now this was valued for an isothermal process where the temperature remains constant. Now my question is, what is the equation for P for an adiabatic process? So what I want is, I want to know what is the function of P, what is the value of P as a function of V given that the change in the heat supplied is equal to zero. So again, I, what I want to know is what should be the equation for P which is a function of V given that the heat supplied is 0. So now what we will do is we will develop an equation for P. Okay. From first, okay now this is the derivation for the, to find the function of P for an adiabatic process. From first law of thermodynamics we know that this is from first law of thermodynamics we know that delta Q equals delta U plus P delta V. This is from first law of thermodynamics. And in adiabatic process we know that there is no heat supplied. Okay? In adiabatic process we have said that no heat is supplied that is delta q equal to 0 so if delta q equal to 0 then this term on left hand side is equal to 0 we can write the internal energy in terms of its specific heat okay so writing internal energy in terms of its specific heat it is equal to number of moles specific heat at constant volume into the change in temperature plus p delta v and this is the change in temperature, this is the change in volume. What we consider is, we consider the change to be infinitesimal. Let us consider, let us consider the change in temperature volume to be infinitesimal. Infinitesimal. So if we consider it to be infinitesimal, then whatever is delta T, I have to write it as NCV dt. Now whatever is delta we have write it as small change so this means a large change delta v means a large change dv means a small change so i rearrange this equation i rearrange this and i write as ncv dt equals to minus p dv let us call this equation one now we know from ideal gas law from ideal gas law 
know from ideal gas law PV is equal to nRT. If we differentiate this on both sides, we get this. Okay? We differentiate on both sides, we get this. And the differentiate uh, the once we differentiate this left hand side, what do we get is we consider a differential of uv. Consider this u into v. So this becomes p times dv plus v times dp. This is equal to nrt dt. Sorry, nr dt. Okay, we rearrange this equation and I write it as n dt equals 1 upon r p dv plus v dp. If you see here this term, I can replace the term in equation 1 with this term. Okay, so I replace the equation 1, replace the term in equation 1 with this term and then I substitute for what I have on the right hand side. So using this equation in 1, what I get is, I replace n and dt by this term. So what I get is, cv times pdv plus v times dp the right hand side remains as it is minus p but remember there is an r so i cross multiply the r on this side so p r d okay so now i multiply this term inside the bracket and i bring this term on this side i add this term on both the sides so what i get is adding this term on both sides and multiplying cv inside the bracket i get cv and rearranging it, I get CVV DP plus C into V, sorry, CV into P DV, and I subt add this term on both sides plus PR DV. So rearranging it, I get CVV DP plus, I open a bracket, CV plus R P DV equals 0. Remember there is a equal to 0 on top as well. On this term, if you notice, if you remember, this term Cp plus R is nothing but a specific heat at constant pressure. So replacing this term by Cp and rearranging it, okay, so now I replace this term by Cv, Cvv dp plus Cpp dv equals 0. Now what I do is, I am going to divide throughout by Cv. I divide throughout by CV. So if I divide throughout by CV, I get DP V plus CP CV P DV is equal to 0. Okay. Now what I do is I rearrange these terms. I divide throughout by V and P. Okay, I divide throughout by V and P. So dividing throughout by P and V, what I get is DP by P plus CP by CV, DV by V equals to 0. Okay. So dividing throughout by P and V. So P into V, P into V, P into V. So dividing throughout by P into V, I get this. Now I define a new term, we define a new term gamma equal to Cp by Cv. This gamma is often called as adiabatic index. So adiabatic index is nothing but the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure divided by ratio of specific heat at constant pressure to specific heat at constant volume. So gamma is called as the adiabatic index. So I replace this term So I replace this term by this new ratio So I get dp by p plus gamma times dv by v equals 0 Okay Now I want an equation in terms of p which is a function of v So now what I do is I integrate this term. I integrate these terms. This gamma is a constant, I take it out of the integral. So integral of this is nothing but log of p plus gamma is a constant. Integral of this is v. An integral of 0 is a constant. Is a constant. 
ठीक है आई यूजली राइट दिस कॉन्स्टेंट इज नथिंग बट लॉग ऑफ सम कॉन्स्टेंट ठीक है आई आई कैन रिपेंस इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट आई कैन राइट द कॉन्स्टेंट द वे आई वॉन्ट आई कैन राइट दिस कॉन्स्टेंट और लॉग ऑफ समथिंग सो कैन राइट दिस इज एल एन पी द सिग्मा एल एन वी इज इक्वल टू लॉग ऑफ अ कॉन्स्टेंट ओके सो आई डू दिस सो दैट इट्स ईजियर फॉर मी टू डू द मैथ now using the properties of log i can write this term on the right hand side is log of pv into is to gamma in ln of constant okay i take i can take anti log on both sides and what i get is pv raised to gamma is equal to constant okay and this is the equation for my adiabatic process adiabatic process so this is my P for adiabatic process is equal to a constant C, any constant C divided by V raised to gamma. So this is my adiabatic process function. We can also write this equation in terms of temperature and pressure. In terms of temperature and pressure, you can write this as T V gamma minus one is equal to a constant. Okay. We have to just replace P. In terms of the ideal gas, P V equal to N R T, and we end up with this. Now the next step is to calculate the work done in the adiabatic process. So what is the work done in an adiabatic process? So let us calculate the work done in an adiabatic process. done in an adiabatic process okay so let us consider this process p v and let's say initially it is point 1 and then it drops to point 2 okay now what is the temperature of this temperature at point 1 is nothing but the temperature that this isothermal is on and at this point it is at this isothermal is on. okay so again i see if you compare this adiabatic with an isothermal process you see that adiabatic curve is much steeper okay? it goes from 1 to 2 now what is the work done we know that the work done is given as the integral of p dv So here, P, we know that for an adiabatic process, we know that adiabatic process, P V raised to gamma is equal to constant. So if we consider the constant to be equal to C, for reference, let's say constant is C, then P is equal to C times V gamma. Another thing that what we notice is if P V is equal to constant, what this basically means is. At point one, let's say at point one, this point at point one, p one v one is to gamma is a constant anywhere along this path. Okay, so at point one, if it is this, at point two also, this equation must be satisfied. So anywhere along this path, if it is an adiabatic process, this equation must be satisfied. That is, p v raised to gamma must be equal to a constant. So using this in this now again here if we have to integrate this we need p as a function of v so we replace p in terms of v okay so we replace p in terms of v so we get the work done is equal to integral of c v raised to gamma into dv okay now this c is again a constant it's a constant so we can remove this out of this bracket sorry out of the integral so c times integral dv into v raised to gamma now what is the integral it's going from v1 to sorry it's going from 1 to 2 so for reference let us consider the pressure at 1 is p1 and volume at 1 is p1 and pressure at 2 is p2 and volume at point 2 is v2 so so the work done going from v1 to v2 okay so this is equal to now the integral of dv by v raised to gamma is equal to v raised to minus gamma plus 1 divided by 
gamma plus 1 in the limits of the integral as it is v1 rho v2 okay is equal to c times c times now i multiply this v2 c inside the gamma bracket. plus 1 and this term v2 into minus gamma plus 1 you can write it as v2 raised to minus gamma into v2 so now multiplying c inside the bracket i get c v2 minus gamma to v2 plus c v1 minus gamma v1 divided by 1 minus gamma now if you remember the adiabatic process we said p raised to gamma is equal to constant c so we can write p as c divided by v raised to gamma which is nothing but c into raised to minus gamma so we can replace this c into v2 minus gamma as p2 times v2 <coughs> and this term is p1 into v1 divided by i rearrange this term and i write it as gamma minus 1 okay and this is equal to this i can equal to i take this i rearrange the top term and i get rid of this minus sign and i get my work done in an adiabatic process is equal to v1 v1 minus p2 v2 divided by gamma minus 1 now this is the work done by the gas in an adiabatic process adiabatic process Okay. So when we solve problems, if this is an adiabatic process, if the process is adiabatic and we have a PV diagram, we have a PV diagram, and we have an adiabatic process, we can find the work done by this process using this equation. Okay. So similarly for any PV diagram, whatever path, whatever process it follows, we can find the work done for each process by one of these equations. So this is the end of my first lecture students, online lectures. So next lecture we will be covering second law of thermodynamics. Thank you.